And welcome back. This is Mr. Wakefield here looking at the last section that we're going to do in, sec in uh, Chapter 4, and that's Section 4.4. Uh, these problems are very similar to a couple of different sections that we uh, did in the past. Of one of those sections is 4.1, okay, where um, we uh, had inequalities. Um, we have inequalities again here. The difference, though, if you look at the problems side by side, is that this one has two variables and this one has one. Okay, that makes a big difference as far as uh, uh, the fact that with the one variable, you just have a number line. It's kind of like an x-axis because you just have one variable. Whereas when you have two variables, you have what? You have an x-axis and a y-axis. You got the two axes uh, instead of just the one number line because you have two variables. So that's one thing that we need to talk about. Another thing that we need to talk about is that it's also similar to section 2.4 where um, you can see that the lines that we did there okay we're in the mx plus b form and this one is as well with the exception of the fact that this is not an equal sign like this one is it's an inequality okay but we are going to temporarily change this to an equal sign and then graph the corresponding line because when it looks like this right here uh, you'll notice here it's in the y equal to mx plus b form uh, if uh, we change it to an equal sign, it will be y equal to mx plus b, okay, in the slope-intercept form, all right, just like we talked about up here in 2.4. Uh, and then the m tells us the slope, and the b tells us the y-intercept, all that stuff that we learn, and we'll review that here as well. Uh, but because it's an inequality, we're not just going to graph the line. That's a big mistake the students sometimes make, is that... Uh, this looks so similar to these problems that they'll just graph the line because the problem says to graph, and then they'll stop right there. No, we're not going to do that because the inequality means so much more than just the equal sign does. Uh, but the, the line is going to be a part of it. In fact, it's going to be the first step, and so that's why I was comparing it to these problems here. All right, and by the way... Um, Sometimes the problems will look like this right here, where it's not in the y equal to mx plus b form, but both sides are polynomials, and you don't have any ex any visible exponents attached to the variables here. It's just x to the first and y to the first. Again, when that happens, kind of similar to a problem like this or a problem like this over here in 2.4, those are called linear equations, all right, and therefore when we graph them, they're lines. Well, the, again, the only difference with this problem compared to 2.4 is that it's not an equal sign, it's an inequality. So once again, just like this problem over here, because of the fact that the uh, not having an equal sign, instead having an inequality, an alligator mouth, since that's the only difference, all right, um, we are also going to graph a line here. We're going to change this to an equal sign temporarily, graph the line. But like I said, that's just the first step. We're not going to stop right there. Why? It's because it's not an equal sign. If it was just an equal sign and they asked you to graph it, again, it would just be a line then based on the type of equation that this is. But because it's an alligator mouth instead of an equal sign, we need to do more than just graph the line. Okay, so the first step will be to graph the line, though. Okay, that will be the first step. And like I said, and in fact, it mentions it up here. It says graph the corresponding equation. All right, in other words, change the inequality sign to an equal sign. So step one, I'll write it off to the side here. Step one is to temporarily change the inequality symbol, the alligator mouth, to an equal sign right there. And... What that means is, uh, since it's in the y equal to mx plus b form here, uh, a constant times x plus another constant. Remember, this is the same thing as plus negative 1. So it fits into that mx plus b form. That means that the m is 2. I'll call it 2 over 1 because uh, when we, we always want to make our slope into a fraction so that we can use you know the rise and run or the drop and run uh, technique that we learned in Chapter 2. All right, uh, the B is negative 1, and as we learned back in section 2.4, let's review that. When you have the M and the B, you start out by putting the B on the graph, and then you use the M, and if the M is positive, you rise and run. If it's negative, you drop and run. 
Okay, in this case, it's positive. And so I'll start out by putting the B on there, right there. Negative one on the y-axis. Remember, B is the y-intercept, so it goes right on the y-axis. Uh, this right here means we're going to rise two and run one to the right because it's positive. So I'm going to go up one, two, and then over one. Remember, don't jump over the axis here. That's one. You've got to count that. So that's one, two, and then go over one. And don't don't graph the line yet, though. There's one other thing we need to consider before we do that that's a little bit different than before if the alligators got feet we're gonna do a solid line if the alligator doesn't have feet we're gonna do a dashed line okay now it's kinda of hard to see that on my video but if you look close at, close at the worksheet there uh, let me go and zoom in too much there yeah it's kinda of hard to see um, because the dashes are so close together this should be let me highlight that there a little bit better for you Okay, there we go. How's that look? Ah, that's not the best either. Okay, let me write it off to the side here. Oh, I'm drawing a solid line. I'm so used to drawing solid lines, as we all are. Okay, what do you want it to look like is this, though? There we go. A dashed line. Okay, there it is right there. So if the alligator doesn't have feet, okay, um, you want to use a dashed line, otherwise a solid line. Okay, so since the alligator doesn't have feet right here, I'm going to still do my arrows and everything and make a nice straight line. It's just that the line's going to be dashed like this. Make sure, it wasn't as big of a deal before, make sure that your line goes all the way from one, one end of the grid to the other end. Don't make it a nice little small line. It's got to go from one end. Uh, see how like the grid makes like a, 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 a invisible box right here? If you go from one end of the grid to the other here. Uh, just make sure your line goes from one end of the grid to the other. Put your arrows on it because it is still a line. Okay. But the reason why it needs to go from one end to the other like that is it, it's going to serve a, as a boundary for a shading, okay? Because remember in 4.1 when we did inequalities, we found out that inequalities were related to shadings here, okay? The difference with this problem, though, is that now instead of a single number being your boundary, see how 5 was a boundary for your shading here, okay? It's like there's a wall there at 5, and the shading is just on one side but not the other okay well now the line serves as that boundary where the shading will be completely on one side of it but not the other just like it is here see how the shading is completely on one side of the five but not at all on the other side it's one or the other one side or the other it's the same thing here okay you're, you're going to shade in either this entire side right here or you're going to shade in this entire side right here. It's going to be one or the other. Okay, it's not going to be a little bit of both. It's one or the other. So, step two was to figure out that the um, that it was a dashed line because there was no alligator feet. Step three, here's the big step. Step three is to, I'll go ahead and write it down here, is to... We're going to do it a little bit differently than we did it in, uh, because of the fact we have two variables instead of one. We're going to do it a little bit differently than we did in 4.1. Okay, it's not, it has nothing to do, usually anyway, it has nothing to do with what direction the alligator is going in. Okay, I said before that if the alligator is eating the variable, then you always go to the right. <laughs> the problem is that now we have two variables, so you can't really do that. So there's a different way we're going to do it. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to pick a point, any point on the entire grid, as long as it's not on the line. See how right here, that 0, 0 right here, the, that, that point that is where the x-axis and y-axis meet right here? Okay, that point right there is not on the line, is it? If it was, then don't pick that one. Pick something else. But since it's not on the line, I'm going to pick that point. You might be wondering, why did I pick that point? Why didn't I just pick any other point? Why did it have to be that one? It doesn't have to be that one. You could pick any point you want as long as it's not on the line. It's just a zero, zero oftentimes is a really easy point to pick because it's always, e it's almost always, not always, it's almost always easy, uh, or easier anyway, to plug in zeros compared to other numbers. 
Because when you plug a zero into a term of a polynomial, for example, a monomial term, it just makes the terms, it makes the whole term zero. It's just it's nice and simple usually. And so that's why I like to pick a zero zero if it's not on the line. Just make sure it's not on the line though. But ultimately, you guys, you can pick any point you want as long as it's not on the line. Okay, just to let you know. So it's up to you what point you want to pick, really. Um, that's just what I prefer, zero, zero. So I plug it into the y and the x here. And notice I plugged it into the inequality, guys. Very important. Do not plug it into the equation. The equation is for step one and for step one only. Once step one is completed, get rid of that equal sign and go back to the uh, looking at the inequality with the alligator mouth. Okay, no more equal sign there. Okay, with the y and the 2x minus 1 once you get done with step one. All right, that's just to help you find this, this boundary line, okay, that we graph each time. So anyway, what I do now is I check to see if this statement is true or not. The way I do that, since there's no variables in this, is I do order of operations on each side of the alligator. Okay, uh, so zero, and don't, don't try to combine the two sides together. Okay, there's no, we're not trying to get x by itself or anything like that. We're just trying to figure out what the two sides are equal to. So keep the two sides separate. Okay, one side is obviously zero. The other side, since I need to do order of operations, would be multiplication first and then subtraction. Two times zero is zero. Zero minus one is negative one. Question, you guys, is this a true statement or false statement? Is zero less than negative one? Now, actually, zero is greater than negative one because zero is greater than any negative number in the world, isn't it? Okay, so this is actually false. Let me explain what that means. What we just discovered, you guys, is that 0, 0, that point right there is false, meaning that it is not a solution to the inequality. Remember, when you graph something, you're finding the solutions. You're illustrating the solutions. Okay, so I don't want to shade the 0, 0 because the 0, 0 is false. It's not a solution. Well, like I told you guys with in 4.1, same thing here. All the solutions are either going to be on one side or the other. So if 0, 0 is not a solution then that must mean that the side that it's on must be the side where the solutions are not located. Okay? Because if 0, 0 was a solution, all right, then they would all have to be there. Remember, it's either all or nothing. Okay? One side has all the solutions and the other side has none. It's just a matter of finding out which one is the side that has all of them and which side is the one that doesn't have any of them. Okay? So since this point is uh, not a solution, that must be the side that's not a solution. None of these points, in other words, on this side are a solution right here. And as we talked about in 4.1, we always shade where the solutions are located. So, to make a long story short here, you guys, just to look at it a different way here, uh, if you plug something in and it's false, always shade the other side. So since the um, zero, 0, was on the left side of the line over here on the left, we're going to shade on the other side over here. If zero, 0, been true, then we would shade the same side that the zero, 0 was located on. Okay. Now make sure that this is a good, solid shading. Okay. Um, I see some students sometimes, and by the way, we're done with the problem now. Because uh, you don't need to do interval notation with this, okay? So once the graph is done, just like when we, uh, the, with the graph in 4.1, once we did that, okay, uh, we don't since we don't need to do interval notation in this section, you're done with the problem. Same thing here. You did your, uh, uh, and you don't need to do the brackets either because the line, see how we had the round and square brackets here? Okay, the line is like the round and square bracket. It's playing the same role. It's like the wall that uh, keeps the shading on one side of it, okay? It keeps the shading on one side of it here. All right, um, and so um, we're done with this now, okay? But what I'm concerned about, uh, for your own sake, let's say that you had graphed a line like this. You don't have to write this down. Just look at this. Let's say you graphed a line like that, and then you just went, uh. Okay, just a real lazy looking uh, shading like that. That doesn't really tell me right there, you guys, that the entire 
set of points on that side of the line is our solutions all of them all of them are okay so going real lazy like this that's not gonna um tell me that every single point over there's a solution so instead of doing this and also don't go like this either let me show you this is another uh, thing that students sometimes misunderstand they'll just shade really close to the line like this but they won't like shade in the entire region you got to shade in the entire region don't just shade in the points that are really close that's not good enough Okay, you got to tell me that everything over on that side of the line is a solution by shading the whole thing in all the way to the end of the grid here, all the way to where the x axis goes to the end, all the way to where it's uh, even with the end of the y axis, even with the x axis, even with the y axis again down here at the bottom, as you see the arrow to get down here at the bottom, even across with that, all the way to the ends. Okay, that's what you need to do in order to have a complete shading. All right. You don't need to be all artistic, okay? Uh, although if you are uh, good at drawing, that's even better, but you don't. That's not a requirement. Certainly, this is a math class, not an art class, okay? Um, just make it a good solid shading. You can see here that I'm not the best artist either after looking at this, right? But um, it is uh, a good solid shading, though. Okay, so if you have something like this, I'll... I'll understand I'll uh, I'll be convinced that you understand the problem okay so anyway uh, I'm gonna get this problem started here for you just because it looks a little bit different there's something very important I want to show you there and then I'll let you finish it since it's a numbered problem normally uh, and as always you guys step one is to convert this to an equation by making it an equal sign everything else stays the same like that okay and then uh, what? Then uh, we need to get the, um, we have one or two choices, okay? Since it's written like that where the Y is not by itself, you could do that thing that you uh, that we did in 2.4 where you just plug in a couple points. You plot a couple points. Let me just give you an illustration of that. Here it is. Let me bring that in here. Um, so in this problem right here, uh, you could do what we did here where since the Y is not by itself, you could plug in uh, a couple of points. It could be zeros. Okay, it doesn't have to be in this case. That's what we did in 2.4, but it doesn't have to be. Uh, or you could do what we did down here, which is to get the Y by itself, okay, and then do the M and B step. It's your choice. They don't tell you which method you have to do here, so it's up to you. Okay, um, so just wanted to fill you in on that. Okay, but remember to change this to an equal sign. Okay, because a lot of students make the mistake of keeping the alligator there. They'll then get the y by itself. They choose to do the, the y equal to mx plus b method. And then they'll forget to flip this thing when they divide by negative 3. Because you, you, if you're going to get the y by itself, if you choose to do that method, you would have to divide by a negative 3. And you know that when you divide by a negative, when you're trying to get a variable by itself, that inequality's got to flip around, doesn't it? Okay, now if you remember to flip it, that's fine. And remember, you only flip it if you divide by a negative, not by a positive. Just a reminder there. Okay, so just to, uh, that, just to play it safe, change it to an equal sign. You don't have to worry about remembering that. I know you know how to do that, but just in case, okay? Just in case. Um, change it to an equal sign. You don't even have to worry about it. Okay, so you could um, get this by itself, okay, uh, same way we did in 2.4 where you get the, uh, since we have um, a red term and a couple of green terms here, all right, in other words, since you're trying to get the Y by itself, we take the terms that don't have the Y in it, we put it on the other side, Okay, and the term that has a Y in it will be on the other side. Put the X in front of the 6 here. And then you divide out by negative 3. Don't need to worry about flipping anything because it's an equal sign, not an alligator. Okay. And this is a negative divided by negative is 1. And so that would be 1X over 3. Yes, I'll pull the X out of that like we learned in uh, chapter 2.4. And then div uh, positive divided by negative is... Uh, going to be negative. And so simplifying that, that would be what? That would be one-third pulling out the x like we did 
in section 2.4 and then this if I put that in lowest terms it's gonna be that right there so you could use this you guys or you could just plug in a couple of numbers like x equal to zero and y equal to zero like we did in the first part of uh, 2.4 like I said okay you could do that either way you're gonna get the same line okay and I'll let you finish the rest of it from there so go ahead and graph the line whichever method you want to use go ahead and graph it Okay, make sure that it's a correct kind of line. Okay, we talked about when it's going to be solid and when it's going to be dashed. All right, pick the right thing. Go ahead and do that. And then do step three where you plug in a point that's not on the line. Okay, so I'll let you give that a try. Hit the play button when you're done. We'll see how you did. Okay, so if you did the problem uh, this way with the y equal to mx plus b form, then the m is one-third and the b is negative two. Okay, if you had plugged in these numbers instead, what would you have gotten? If you had plugged in x equal to 0 here, uh, that would have been 0 minus 3y equal to 6. Uh, and as we talked about, when you plug 0 into a term of a polynomial, assuming there's no parentheses or anything, just a normal polynomial, uh, that makes that term disappear, and we just end up with negative 3y equal to 6. If I then divide out by negative 3 y is going to be equal to negative 2. Okay, so if you did it this way, I just want to help you uh, be confident that you got the correct numbers, okay, when you plugged it in, the correct answers. Uh, if you plugged in y equal to 0, okay, that gives me x minus 3 times 0. Again, that term just disappears because it's equal to 0 there, okay. Um, so it'd be... Uh, Negative 3 times 0 is 0. x plus 0 is just x. It's, it's as if the term just disappears like we talked about in that 2.4 section. And since the x is already by itself, I now realize that 6 pairs up with 0. So it, again, it doesn't matter which one of these you do. And it doesn't mean that you're always going to get the same points, but you will get the same line though. Okay, like for example, if you do... Um, if you do uh, the, this method here, you're going to start it out at negative 2. Okay, and then this means to rise and run because it's positive. Okay, so we're going to go up 1 and over 3. Now, if you had done the other method, okay, you would have ended up with uh, uh, these two points right here. Isn't that the same line, though? If you draw it, draw it through there, it's going to end up being the same line, right? So, not the same two points. Okay, uh, the first method had this one, second method had this one over here, both of them had this one, but the, it's not the same pair of points, but it's still the same line, and that's what's most important. Okay, no matter which method you use, it's the same. Okay, so now we've got, uh, now we're ready to draw the line. Okay, that's step one is to get your points on there. Now step two is to what? Is it going to be solid or dashed? Since the alligator's got feet, as we mentioned up here at the top, solid line when the alligator's got feet. So we're going to draw a nice solid line through here, no dashes. Okay. Like that. Sorry, I got a little sloppy there. Make it go all the way from one end to the other. In fact, you can make it go beyond the x-axis where it ends there. That's fine, just so long as it goes at least that far. If it goes a little bit further, that's even better, Okay, although it's not mandatory. Just have it go to the ends of the grid. All right, step three. Is the point zero, 0, on the line? Well, the point zero, 0 is right here, and clearly it's above the line, right? It's not right on the line. Okay, so I'm going to go and pick that since it's not on the line. But again, you can pick any point you want as long as it's not on the line. I'm going to go ahead and plug it in to the original inequality. Do not plug it into the equation from step one. It's got to be plugged into the original inequality. Okay. So that's where I'm getting it from here. And then you do order of operations on each side of the alligator. And then once we determine what each side is equal to, we'll then know if it's true or false. Multiplication first. Um, zero and then negative three times zero is zero. So uh, since this is a uh, since this is x plus negative three times zero, um, this is uh, zero plus negative three times zero. 
Okay, that makes that zero plus zero right there. Because this is plus negative three times whatever you plugged in. Just a reminder there on how that works with that minus sign. Zero plus zero is zero. Is this true or false, you guys? Is zero less than or equal to six? Okay, now when they say less than or equal to six, I want to make sure you understand this. If it says less than or equal to six, it just has to be one of those two things. Okay, it doesn't need to be both less than and equal to at the same time. In fact, that's impossible. You can't be less than something and equal to it, it at the same time. It's got to be either less than or equal, or it may be neither of those things. Okay, but it just has to be one of those two things in order for it to be true. So is it less than? We know it's not equal, but is it less? Is zero less than six? Yeah. Okay, so when it says less than or equal to, um, it just needs to be either less than or equal to in order to be true. Okay. Um, and so since it's true, that means that the point that you plugged in, 0, 0, that must be the true side. Since that point is true, then this side can't be the true side, can it? All right. Uh, this side that I uh, got the 0, 0 from, that's got to be the true side. Okay. If one point is true, all of them have got to be true. Because it's all or nothing. So you can't have one point that's true, but then the rest of them are false, right? Okay, if one point is true, they're all true because of that the fact that one side is all true and one side's all false. So since this is true, this must be the side that we shade. Again, make it a good solid shading right here, you guys. Okay, that goes all the way to the end of the grid. Okay. Uh, like you can see I'm doing here. It's not the most artistic thing, but it's just a good, complete, thorough shading. Though. Okay. So, to review here. If the point you plugged in was false, take the side that the point is on and shade the other side. Because the, if it's false, then that means that the side that the point is on is a false side, and you always shade the true side. Okay. So, if the point you plugged in is false... The other side must be the true side. So if it's false, shade the other side from where that point was. If it's true, shade the same side. And here's that point right there. So you can see I shaded the same side that that point's on. Okay, that's the top part, the part that's above. That's the same side. All lines in these problems, you guys, all the lines are always going to break the entire grid up into two parts. Okay, there's going to be one side that's good and one side that's bad. One side that's true, one side that's false. And therefore, there's going to be one side that's shaded and one side that's not. Okay. All right. So let me know if you have any questions about that. Okay. So as we get ready to turn to the second page of section 4.4, we're going to use what we just learned here to see a bigger problem that we're going to have. Uh, so let me go ahead and turn to that, and then I'll talk about it. Here it is over here. Hold on just a minute. There we go. Here's the second page. And um, it says graph each system of linear inequalities. We've seen systems before. Back in section 3.1, all right, section 3.1, we saw systems of equations, okay, and it's going to turn out to be very similar uh, as far as how the answer is supposed to come out, but the way in which we get there is completely different, though. But let me just explain something here. Uh, when you have two equations and you have to solve the system, okay, the answer that you get is the uh, solution that makes both equations true. All right. And uh, when we saw the three equation systems uh, a couple sections after that in section 3.3, again, the answer we came up with was the thing that made all three of them true. So that's what a solution to a system is. It is the solutions that actually make all of them true. All right, so when you see, for example, in problem C, two inequalities, uh, you want to find as your final answer, and I'll show you how to do this carefully here, but you want to find as your final answer just the points on the graph that make both of these true because that's what it means to solve a system. And when you're graphing something, you are essentially illustrating the solutions as we've talked about before. So... Uh, graphing the system of linear inequalities, since we actually, uh, when we uh, solve a, just a single inequality or graph a single inequality, uh, as we just found out on the first page, the way we do that is by illustrating it on a graph, okay? Um, 
that's how you illustrate the solution. So if you want to find the uh, points that are uh, going to work for both of these, all right, what we do is we put both of these on the same graph. Don't put them on separate graphs. That's not going to work. But you put them on the same graph, okay, and then uh, we'll then be able to see uh, which ones are solutions to both. It's where they, uh, the two different graphs intersect each other, and, and that's including the shadings, okay. But anyway, uh, let's jump right into it, and then I'll talk about that more here as we go along. But like I said, we want to put both of these on the same grid here. Otherwise, you won't be able to see what the solutions are. Let me start out with the first one. Um, step one is to change this to a equal sign. Again, you could get it into y equal to mx plus b form like we talked about in 2.4, or you can just plot a couple points. I'm going to do that this time since the y is not by itself. Uh, it's just a personal preference, but you honestly could do it either way, like I said. Uh, if I plug in zeros like I did in 2.4, okay, when you have two variables and you decide not to do the, the y equal to mx plus b uh, method for graphing, but you want to just do uh, the two points, as we saw in that section, you just plug in a couple of zeros, okay. Not that you uh, have to do the zeros here. In that section you did, but you don't have to here. You could plug in any numbers you want uh, into either X or Y. The important thing is that you come up with a couple of uh, ordered pairs here after you find out what numbers match up with these zeros. All right. Uh, so if I plug in uh, X equal to zero, I get zero minus Y equal to four. Again, when you plug a zero into a term of a polynomial here, like this is, uh, this, the uh, term that you plugged it into just disappears because it becomes zero. Um, then we divide out to get the y by itself, and we get y equal to negative 4. So that means that uh, the zero pairs up with negative 4 right there. And uh, so then what happens when I plug in y equal to zero? Uh, again, into this one into the, uh, pardon me, into this one. We want to plug it into the equation with the equal sign because uh, that's what we do in step one. We plug it in here like that. Plug the y equal to zero into there. Again, the, zero, the term that you plug the zero into disappears, and so it just ends up being x equal to four. x is already by itself, and so there's your uh, two points right there. Let's put those on there. Be very neat about this, as neat as you possibly can. Okay, because uh, we're going to have multiple graphs on here with multiple shadings. And so we really want to be as neat as we can so that we can see what the final answer is going to be more clearly. And so let's put those points on there. It's 0, negative 4, and then here's 4, 0. As we learned on the first page, uh, because this has uh, alligator feet right here, we're going to use a solid line. Make it go all the way to the ends of the graph, like I said on the first page. And then the last step is to plug in a point that's not on the line. Zero, zero is the, usually the easiest one if it's not on the line. And you can see it's not. It's up here. So I'm going to plug in zero, zero into the inequality, not the equation. So you're going back to where the alligator is, not where the equal sign is for step three. And we get this right here. Is that true? Well, let's find out. 0 minus 0 is 0. Is 0 greater than or equal to 4? No, it's not. It's less than 4, isn't it? It is less than 4, so it's going to be false. Okay, what do we do when it's false? You take the point that you plugged in, which is uh, 0, 0, since it's above the line, then that means that above the line is the false side of the line. If one point is false, all the points on that side, in this case the side that's above the line, are all false. And so that must mean that the other side is the true side, and we always shade the true side. Don't shade this too dark this time, you guys. You'll see why here in a second. Okay. Part, uh, let me just say now, it's because, partly because uh, you're going to have multiple shadings, and so you don't want to make it too dark yet. All right. You want to be able to distinguish between the different shadings. So just make it kind of semi-dark here, okay, like that. And now let's do the other one. Okay, step one is what? Change it to an equal sign. 
uh, again, uh, since the Y is already going to be by itself if I move over the X, I'm just going to move over the X right there. Uh, but again, you could do it either way. You could plug in the zeros. You could uh, get Y by itself either way. But if I do it this way, what is the slope? And what is the Y-intercept? The Y-intercept is 6, but the slope is uh, negative 1, right? Because it's negative 1X. Always want to make a slope into a fraction. And since that's a negative fraction, isn't that going to be drop and run, as we learned in Chapter 2? Negative fractions is drop and run. And so I go up to the y-intercept of 6. And then I drop one and run one. Drop one and run one. And that would take me to here, wouldn't it? Go down one and then go to the right one. Okay. What kind of uh, line am I going to draw here now that I have my two points? I am going to draw a solid line because the alligator's got feet again here. Okay. Like that. Last step is what? I'll just put it up here, kind of keep it all together. Step three is. Uh, again, zero, zero is not on that line. Okay, we're just talking about this line right now. The other graph is completely done already. Uh, just so long as you pick a point that's not on the, the line that you just graphed, that's what's important. So I'll do zero, zero again. If I plug that in to the inequality, I get this right here. Is that true or false right there? Zero plus zero is zero. Is zero less than or equal to six? It's less than 6, so this is true, isn't it? That's true. Okay, what does that mean? That means that the side that 0, 0 is on, since 0, 0 we, is the one we plugged in, the side that that's on is the true side. If one point is true, all the points on that same side are true. Okay, so uh, that means we're going to want to shade below the line. Okay, and it's gonna some of it's gonna overlap with this stuff over here. That's one of the reasons why I made it kind of light, okay, on the shading. I'm also gonna have it go the other direction is from this one just to see the contrast a little bit more easily. Okay. See how I'm shading below the line right here. Okay. You can do it any way you want here as far as your shading. Uh, you can do like a a bunch of lines like this, okay, like I'm doing right now. You can make it a little bit more darkened in like they did the first one. But um, I want you to notice here, though, that uh, after you do the two graphs, and if you got three graphs, you got to do all three first. But once you're done with all of the individual graphs, in this case there's two of them, you then need to do one more thing and then the problem's done. You do not stop right here. If you stop right here, I'm going to think you don't understand what the final answer is, okay? you got to do one more thing after you do the two individual graphs. You need to take the spot on the graph where the, all the shadings intersect each other, and you need to indicate uh, that you understand that that's the final answer. And the way you do that is just by simply taking uh, that region right here. Can you see here that this region right here, that region down here in the right-hand corner, bottom right-hand corner, that region is where the two shadings intersect. That's the only region where they intersect. This little triangle right here is only for the first shading. This part up here in the top left, that's only for the second shading. But it's the bottom right-hand corner, that region, that's the one where they intersect each other. And so that whenever the two shadings intersect each other, that means that that's the spot where the solutions to both of the inequalities exist. And that's what we want when we graph a system. We want to find the points where uh, the points that are solutions to both of them. All right, and so if they intersect there, that means that the shadings are in, uh, both of the shadings are in that region. That's why they're intersecting each other. Both of the shadings hit this region right here. They go through this region right here, and therefore the solutions uh, in that region are actually solutions to both of them. And that's what we're trying to find. So basically what you do at the end of one of these problems when you graph a system of inequalities is you go 
to the spot where all the shadings intersect each other and we're going to make this extra an extra dark shading that's why i was saying to make it lighter earlier by making this part extra dark i will then know like if i see this on a homework problem or especially a test question okay i will know that you understand that hey this is the final answer right here because you're making it extra dark you're distinguishing it from the rest of the problem the rest of your answer here all right and then that will indicate to me that oh yeah that's where uh that's where your final answer is meant to be okay so when we graph a system of linear inequalities you're going to have your individual shadings but then you're going to want to make your final answer extra dark okay in order to make it clear what the final answer is okay now there's a different way to do this to make it so that it's not as messy there's not so many shadings all over the place okay because that can get kind of messy especially when you have three shadings or maybe even four shadings like we're gonna have down here okay there's a different way to do it but you still need to make that final answer extra dark that's what's important it's just that the way in which we get to that final extra dark shading uh, I'm gonna show you a different way to get there to um, again make it a little bit less messy a little bit neater okay so I'll show that to you in this problem and then you'll have the option of uh, doing it either way okay you can either do the all the individual shadings before the final uh, extra dark shading, or you can do the other method I'm going to show you right now. Okay, now we have three of them this time. So uh, we have theoretically three shadings that we got to do. Again, I'm going to do the shadings a little bit different here, um, but we theoretically have three shadings we got to do. Just like over here, we had two for the two inequalities here. So let's get started. Okay, so the first one, step one is to what? Step one is to make it into an equal sign. And since the y can be by itself after just one step, once again, I'm just going to move over the 3x right here. Uh, just like we were doing in 2.4 to get the y by itself. And what's the, uh, now that it's in the mx plus b form there, y equal to mx plus b, what is the slope in the, in the b there? That would be negative 3 for the slope. Same thing as negative 3 over 1. And then the B would be 6, wouldn't it? So let's go ahead and graph that. Since B is positive 6, I'm going to go up here on the Y axis to 6. And then since the slope, again, is negative like it was in the last example there, uh, that means that uh, we're going to drop and run again. So I'm going to drop three and run one drop three and run one all right now before you um before you graph it once again since the alligators got feet here in fact all three of them do that means that all of your lines on this uh problem are going to be solid lines not dashed lines okay uh we do have problem number three down here that has uh, one of the inequalities does not have alligator feet so that one will be a dash line okay just to remind you the, of the difference there between solid lines and dash lines but all the problems in this one are going to be uh dash line i mean solid lines okay there we go all right let me just make that look a little bit better there. But yeah, draw your line. Put your arrows on it. Make sure it extends from one end of the graph to the other like we talked about. And then again, you can see that zero, 0, is not on the line. So I'm going to go ahead and use that. Okay. Step three, I'm going to plug in zero, 0, And uh, does that make it true or not? Let's see. Do uh, apps do uh, pardon me? Do a order of operations on each side here. Multiplication comes before addition, and then when we add, we get zero. Still, don't we? Is that true or false? Zero is less than six, so that's true. What does that mean? Well, since that uh, point right there that we plugged in is to the left of the line, then the region over here that's to the left of the line is the true region, not the false region. 
Since one point is true in that region, 0, 0, that means all the points are true in that region. So what I'm going to do here, since we have three shadings this time that we got to do, instead of actually drawing the shading like I did in the last problem to be a little bit neater, a little bit cleaner, all right, I'm going to draw arrows. Because as you guys know, when we have a shading, all right, the shading either goes one direction or the other, right? So if I do the arrows instead, it's cleaner. It's not uh, so much shading that you got to write, and that can get kind of messy. Uh, but the arrows still tell you where the shading is. Now, make no mistake, the shading still goes all the way over here, okay? But the, the arrows are just telling us where that shading is going without being so messy. All right, but it's up to you. If you feel like you can do a, a problem like this without the, to, so that I understand what your final answer is clearly and I can see all your work with, by just doing the shadings instead of the arrows, then feel free to still do the shadings. No, no question about it. That's okay. All right. Um, but uh, arrows are also okay. All right. And so... <clears throat> That's it for the first one. Now, notice on the other two here, there's a variable missing. Now, we talked about that in 2.4 as well. Uh, we talked about in 2.4 where, um, and I'll pull that up here for you, in fact, just, just as a little uh, uh, refreshing of your memory here. Whenever you have a variable missing and that X is the one that's missing, it's always going to be a horizontal line. Since y is equal to negative 4 here, we're going to put it at negative y equal to negative 4, and it'll go across. Whenever it's, uh, uh, whenever the, um, as you can see here, whenever the y is missing, and you get the x by itself, that's going to be a vertical line. So x only means vertical, y only means horizontal, uh, and then you just have to figure out what the variable is equal to, get it by itself if it's not already, and then draw the line. Okay, so same thing here. If I do the normal steps here, step one is to change it to an equal sign. I get x equal to negative 2. All right, let me just be a little bit neater here. There we go. Uh, since x only is all that we got there, uh, again, that means that uh, it's going to be vertical when it's x only there. Okay, and so since x is equal to negative 2, I go over to negative 2 right here. And I draw a vertical line through there. Solid line again, like we said, because the alligator's got feet on that inequality there. And then we do what? Then we plug in 0, 0 again, because 0, 0 is not on that line either. Now, you might be wondering, wait a second. Uh, there's only one variable in this inequality right here. How do I plug in uh, the 0, 0 if there's only the x there and not the y? Well, if a variable is missing, you guys, you are welcome to just ignore the y part of uh, what you're supposed to plug in. Okay, so see how this says x equal to 0 and y equal to 0? Since x is the only thing there, you only have to plug in the x equal to 0. You can ignore the y equal to 0. That's perfectly fine. It'll come out correct. Sorry, I forgot to plug it in. There we go. So I'm plugging in uh, 0 into x. Again, ignore the y because it's not there. Is this true or false, you guys? This is true, isn't it? Because 0 is always bigger or greater than any negative number. So since 0, 0 is right here, that means that all the points on that side of the vertical line are true. Since the point you plugged in was 2. And so that must mean that the shading must go in this direction, doesn't it? Towards, in other words, the shading always goes towards the point that you plugged in, if that point is true. And if the point that you plugged in is false, as you see over here, if the point you plugged in was false, okay, then the shading goes away from the point that you plugged in. See how I plugged in 0, 0 for this one? It was false, and so the shading went downward. It went down in here instead of going up towards the zero, zero. Okay, so false, you shade away from the point you plugged in. True, you shade towards it. And that, so that's why the arrows point towards the zero, zero point. Okay. Last one here. Y less than or equal to four. Step one, change that to Y equal to four. 
as we just found out in section 2.4 when we reviewed it. Uh, if y is the only thing you got and no x, that's going to be a horizontal line. And since y is equal to 4, we just simply draw a horizontal line through y equal to 4. Like that. Solid again because the alligator's got feet there. Okay. And then uh, step three is what? Is to plug in the zero, zero. Okay, since y is the only thing we got this time and there's no x in this one, that means we don't have to plug in the x equal to zero. We just have to plug in the y equal to zero here. So very similar to that last problem there. If I plug that in, what do I get? Isn't that true right there? Zero is less than four, isn't it? So what does this mean? Since it's true, then that means that your arrows or your shading, in other words, are going to go towards the point that you plugged in. Since the point I plugged in is below the horizontal line that I'm currently dealing with right now, that means that my arrows or my shading, no matter which way you do it, whether you're doing arrows or shading, um, they go towards the point that you plugged in, if it's true. Okay, now, you can see that these arrows are a lot cleaner than um, doing the uh, shadings here. Uh, but we got to be careful to make sure we find out what the final answer is. Remember, the final answer, in, in other words, if I were to put all the shadings on here, if I had done the shadings instead of the arrows, the question is, where would the um, all the shadings intersect each other? Do you see that here? Can you see, just by imagining, if these arrows suddenly turned into shadings here, where would the shadings all intersect? Kind of like over here where they intersected and I, I, I colored it in, right? Um, can you see here that there's only one region? And make sure to check all the different regions so you don't miss anything. But there's only one region that is covered by all of the shadings. In other words, there's only one region that agrees with all of the arrows. What is that region? Okay. It's actually this one right here, isn't it? This one right here. So again, make this one nice and dark here to make it clear that, hey, this is my final answer. There's no confusion. All right. Okay. Is this the only region? Let's just double check. All right. Well, this region over here can't be right because uh, it disagrees with these arrows going the other going to the right. Uh, this region up here disagrees with these arrows and these actually. Okay, uh, these regions, this region up here disagrees with the fact that these arrows go down. This region over here in the top right hand corner disagrees with a couple of the different arrows, including this one. And finally, this big triangle type thing down here, that disagrees with the fact that the arrows for the diagonal line that we did go the other way. This is the only region that agrees with all three sets of arrows that we had, and therefore uh, it is where all three shadings intersect each other. And so this is your final answer. Okay. So you could do arrows or shadings for your three original graphs, your, for your three uh, inequalities that you have, but make sure either way that your final answer is uh, nice and uh, uh, shaded in, nice and thorough here, extra dark to make it clear that, hey, that truly is your final, final answer. Okay. So you can see down here in problems three and four that... Uh, um, we have two here, so I'm going to go ahead and do the. I'm going to do it like this right here, just to show you both ways again. Since there's only two, that won't get too messy. I'll go ahead and do this um, this way right here, where I actually show the individual shadings before I give the final answer. But on this one, I'm going to definitely do the arrows because doing four individual shadings, I can get pretty messy, can't it? But again, you could do it any way you want, as long as I can clearly read what you're doing. I don't care which of the two ways you do it, arrows or shadings. Okay, so uh, please try those two problems. Okay, hit the play button and then we'll wrap up this section. Okay, let's take a look at uh, number three here first. And you see I've already done the work on actually uh, figuring out how the graph is going to be. Let's start out with the first one. I change it to an equal sign. I plotted x equal to 0 and y equal to 0. I found out what uh, goes with that by doing it the same way we've been doing it when we plug in zeros. 
I ended up getting these two points here. Let me put them on here. 0, negative 4, and then 2, comma 0. Like that. Uh, and then step 3 said, oh, I'm sorry, I need to graph it first. Since the alligator's got feet up here, I'm going to do a solid line. Okay. There we go. And then I plugged in 0, 0 since that's not on the line. Okay. Um, as we'll see in the next problem, there are some lines where 0, 0 is on the line. If that's the case, you just pick a point that's not on the line then, different than 0, 0. I'll show you that in just a few minutes. But I plugged in 0, 0. It was true. And since it was true, the arrows, or the shading, in other words, I'm going to do the shading on this one, not the arrows. But you could do it either way, like I said. But the shading and the arrows, no matter which way you do it, they are going to point towards the point that you plugged in because that point is true. So I'm going to shade towards that point. Okay. Like that. Nice solid shading like we talked about at the beginning of this section. All right. Not too dark, though, because we're going to have more than one shading on here. And now let's go to the next one here, the second one. Change it to an equal sign. I got my two points. Let me put them on there. There's one of them right there. You can see that the stuff is starting to intersect with each other. That's why it's so important to be neat. Okay. Uh, zero, negative three. got to plot that. Negative two, zero. Right here. i got to plot that. Okay. And then I need to draw a dotted line this time because this particular inequality does not have alligator feet. So I'm going to go like this. Make the dots a little, or the dashes a little bit darker than normal so you can see through the inequality clearly. And then we need to figure out which direction the shading is going in. We plug in 0, 0. It ends up being true. Again, since it's true, that means that the shading is going to go towards, or the arrows if you're using that, go towards the point that you plugged in. So that means it's going to go upward, up uh, above the dotted line, not down here, but up above because that's where the, the zero, 0, point that you plugged in is located. And so... Shade above that dotted line, you guys. All right. So now I have shaded each one of the uh, the individual, the two individual inequalities here. Okay. Um, where is the, uh, now that I've put both of those uh, shadings on there, where the shadings intersect? That's where the final answer is going to be, and we're going to make it extra dark. Isn't it this triangle right here where they intersect each other? This triangle right here. And so what I'm going to do, just like in problem C right above it, I'm just going to make this extra dark right here to make it clear that, yes, this is my final answer. Okay. Without doing this, I'll think that you uh, just felt like you just had to do the two graphs and that's it. But that's not what this is about. It's about the intersection of the different graphs and their shadings. Okay. That's what the final answer really is. It's not about just putting the two graphs on there and then moving on to the next problem. So, again, make the final intersection of the, all of the shadings extra dark, and then that represents your final answer right there in the extra dark region. All right? That's number three. And if you had done the arrows, you should still end up with that same extra dark region as your final answer, and if you do, you'll be just fine. Okay? All right. Number four, we start out here with a vertical and horizontal line because these uh, both of these are missing a variable. Okay, change it to an equal sign like always in step one. All right, but here's the thing. Um, first of all, x equal to zero is actually the y-axis. Okay, that's already on there, isn't it? So you don't need to graph that. Okay, you don't need to graph something that's already on there. Okay, and it is supposed to be a solid line because the alligator's got feet, so you don't need to change the y-axis to a dotted line or anything like that. Okay, 
Uh, just keep it the way it is. And now that's going to be your first uh, line that you graph right there, the y-axis. And then do your normal thing where you plug in a point that's not on the line. I went ahead and picked 1, 1, you guys, because 0, 0 is on that y-axis line, isn't it? So we can't use that. 1, 1 is right here. It's that point right there. Okay, so that's not on the line. If I plug that in, again, you just have to plug it into the x because the y is not there. x equal to 1 gets plugged in. We get 1 greater than or equal to 0. That's true. And what does that mean again? That means that the arrows that go away from the y-axis are going to go towards the point that you plugged in because it was true. So since the point is to the right of the y-axis that I plugged in, our arrows are going to go to the right like this. You don't need to do too many arrows, just enough to kind of keep things organized here. All right. So that you'll be able to see what the final answer is at the end. Let me just make that arrow a little bit better there. Okay. And then uh, let's move on to the next one here. Y greater than or equal to zero. We change it to an equal sign. Then we realize that Y equal to zero, since that's a horizontal line that goes through Y equal to zero, that's the X axis. It's right on top of the X axis. Since the alligator's got feet, okay, you keep the X axis solid. That's perfectly fine. Okay, we then plug in a point that's not on that line. I'll use the same point since that's above the line. Again, you can't use 0, 0 because it's actually on that x-axis line. But if I plug this in to the uh, original inequality right here, uh, I get uh, 1 greater than or equal to 0 again. Again, that's true. And so what do we do? The arrows are supposed to point towards the point if it's true and away from it if it's false. So since it's true, they're going to point towards the 1, 1, which is above the line. And so that's why our arrows go above and not below, like that. Okay, two more to go here. This one right here, I did the y equal to mx plus b thing. You could have plugged in the zeros instead, like we've done on some of these. That's fine. But I get a slope of negative 2 over 1 and a y-intercept of 4. <clears throat> Let me find, uh, there's, uh, there's y equal to 4 right there. <clears throat> 1, 2, 3, 4. And we're supposed to go what? And the arrow's going to get on the way a little bit here, so let's just be careful. Um, but uh, negative 2 over 1, since that's a negative fraction, we are going to go down 2 and over 1 down to and over one it's going to end up right here so these two points are the points that are on that on that line since the uh, alligators got feet i'm going to make this a solid line right here like that okay um and then we are going to let's see now um we got to do the uh, step through, and this time we can go back to plug in and zero, zero, because it's not on this diagonal line, is it? It's below it down here. So I plug that in, and I ended up getting something that was true right here. Zero less than or equal to four, that's true. So again, true means that uh, since zero, zero is below that line, below and to the left over here, uh, the arrow is going to point below and to the left. They're going to go towards the true point towards the true point as always okay and finally the fourth one is down here at the bottom let me zoom out a little bit there we go and so uh, I did my normal thing I got my two points let me put those on there you see how important it is to be neat here when we got all these things all intersecting each other but it's so important to, to, to put all this on the same grid. Otherwise, you won't be able to see the final answer and the final darkened shading and all that. Okay. Um, so I got the 0, negative 2 right there. Uh, 3, 0. Let me carefully find that right here. That's going to be right there. Hold on. Right there. And so these two points right here are the points that are going to be on that line. So... Again, since the alligator's got feet here, I'm going to draw a nice solid line through that. Like that. 
And then since zero, zero is above that line, I'm allowed to use that. As long as it's not on the line, I can use it. If I plug that in, I get, um, I get zero minus zero after I multiply zero minus zero less than or equal to six. Zero is less than or equal to six, in other words. And that's again true. Okay. Since the zero, zero point that I plugged in was above the line, the arrows are going to point towards it since it was true. Okay. All right, now we got lots of arrows here, right? <laughs> lots of arrows. We've got to be really careful. Now that I've done all the arrows for all of the inequalities, all I have to do is find the region or regions that are uh, in agreement with all the arrows, and that'll be my extra, or the, pardon me, that will be my final answer, and I'll make that extra dark. Okay. We can see that the answer can't be over here because it would disagree with the, this uh, set of arrows on this diagonal line. It can't be down in this area because it is uh, it would disagree with these arrows. Okay, uh, it can't be here because it would disagree with these. Um, it can't be up here because it would disagree with these. The only place that it could be is where right here in this little triangle okay this little triangle right there and it's not down here either it's not in this little area below that triangle i just shaded in because i would disagree with this arrow going upward on the x-axis okay so that triangle I just shaded in is the final answer and that is the only region. So just make sure to check all the regions uh, and shade in only the ones that agree with all of your different arrows that you graphed. Okay, so again you can do either arrows or shadings. What's important is that you uh, make that final region for the final answer extra dark so that I can see what your answer is. Okay, so that is graphing systems of linear inequalities. All right, so that concludes uh, section 4.4. Our next section will be at the start of Chapter 5. Okay, but in the meantime, as usual, let me know if you have any questions. You have a good day and take care.